En die plaatsen dat op YouTube. En dat heeft ook het account Hoortfinder NL gedaan. En hij filmt dat hij in Groningen op zoek is. En dan komt hij toch heel wat bijzonders tegen. Looks like a coin. Looks like hammered. Oh, no way. No way. A handful of silver <laughs> riders. Gotta be freaking kidding me. Woo, my first silver buckle. It's a seal ring. No way. Really nice looking strap end. Look at that. I haven't even looked at it yet. But that looks silver to me. That looks silver to me. No. The bike's got nothing to do with this video. I'm actually shooting the intro for my previous video on my biking video, which will be the next video. So ignore that nonsense. This video, I was due to go right up into the hills with a metal detector. Well, with two metal detectors, I was going to be dueling detectors right up in the hills. But it was a very windy day, so I chose a different site. It's my old standby coin shooting site, because I know it's very sheltered. So this is that video. Before this video starts, I'd just like to throw a big thank you out to Danny from Mr. Crabiny channel. The link is in the video description. Now he sent me a link to an excellent PDF book on buckles. So I'm going to put that link also in the video description and share it with everybody who watches and is interested. Danny, thank you very much. Please check out Danny's channel. Links in the video description. He's a great lad. Now, whilst I am still taking people's channel introductions and adverts for their channels to use at the start of my detecting videos, so please keep sending those in, I've got another idea. And this idea is going to benefit everybody who takes part, and it's also going to benefit everybody who watches as well. Because what I would like you to do is, if you make videos, I'd like you to do somewhere between a two and a five minute video less if you want, more if it's very good, on anything detecting related you want to do it on. So if you want to do it on your specific settings for the XP Deus, or search tips on the beach, or best ways to find abandoned medieval settlements, absolutely anything related to detecting that'll help viewers. Make a short video, send it to me, I'll include it in one of my videos, Put your channel name along the top of your video. If you can't do that, I'll just do that when I'm editing my video. I just think it'll be a great way to build up a, a real sense of community within this hobby. So I'll take videos from absolutely anywhere in the world on any subject, as long as it's relating to metal detecting. Could be on clothing, it could be a review for any equipment. Anything that you think is interesting, the viewer most likely will think is interesting as well. I did do a similar thing ooh, a good year or two ago called Worldwide Metal Detecting Finds where people showed off their finds. So although I've finished that series, if you've got some great finds that you want to show off, make a video of that. And this obviously won't just benefit my videos, I'm doing it for other channels. There's so many good channels out there that just don't get the exposure that they deserve. So I want to try and make that happen. All too often, Somebody who is interested in detecting puts in metal detecting. Up comes 50 grave robbing videos in Germany. No good metal detecting videos with information, product reviews. There's, there's hardly anything comes up. You're very lucky if you get a video in the top 20. So I want you guys to be up there. You deserve it. And if you do a short video, I'll help you. Promote your channel. Reach out to the viewers. And viewers, it's going to be great. I'm sure it's going to be taken up by lots of people once the word gets around. So please share this video to anybody who you think might be interested in that project. It's going to be ongoing and I'm hoping to include one of your videos in each one of my detecting videos. And really get the word out about responsible detecting. This looks like lead and I'm hoping it's a musket ball. Yes, it is very good. Or, no, it's got a hole through it. 
It's actually a lead weight, possibly a musket ball made into a lead weight. Not sure, but it's definitely made of lead. And that was reading 84 to 86 on the Deus. I'm on a site today that I know is ridiculously trashy. Uh, I have had a few coins from here, but I think it's an area where people from the big house used to bring things to burn or dump. There's an unbelievable amount of trash. I did bring both detectors. My intention was to go with two detectors, but the trash levels are just so high, I gave up on that within about a minute. Given the level of trash, I need something with a fast response time, so I've gone with the Deus, and I'm moving incredibly slowly. I'm still using my little pegs, but I'm only marking signals that I think are really good. Anything else, I'm just digging as I find them. I've gone with 10 pegs, so I've covered this area which is roughly 60 meters by 20 meters. Very slowly, it's taken me an incredible amount of time and I've only just managed to put the last peg out now. That shows you how few really good positive signals there is. I have dug a little bit of decent stuff. I've dug a modern 10 pence and a modern 50 pence and... Nice strong signal reading mid 60s. And it's a two shilling, which is also known as a florin. It's an Elizabeth II. Uh, 1966. So that's another one that I found up here from the year when England last won the World Cup. And it's probably going to be 3066 by the time they win it the next time. Oh, aye. A two shilling from 1966. I'm now going to do live digs on each one of these 10 pegs because I think these ones might hold something good. Fingers crossed. Right, we've got this one coming in at late 80s, early 90s. That's a good start, it's a hapenny. Ah, what date is that? 1943. This one's reading the same, 88, 89 to 90. That one's a modern penny. This one's 86 to 88. Very loud. That one's another modern penny. Eighty-five to eighty-six. That one's just a thick washer. This one's 83 to 85. Looks like an old penny. It's one for the tumbler, that one. Very crusty, I can't even see which king or queen it is. Just make out 1929 on the bottom there. That means it's George V. This one's reading 87 to 89. Ah, another modern penny. This one's reading a very steady 81. And that one is an incredibly manky ship half penny. See how it's corroded on the edges there. Absolutely knackered. 
Ah, this area is really horrible. It's absolutely strewn with rubbish. This target's reading between 75 and 80. Not sure what that is. It's like a little bit of a brass cap for something. I'm not sure exactly what, but it ain't no coin. And this one's reading late 80s, early 90s. Well, the coin isn't anything fantastic. It's a modern penny. But in that hole was a tiny little bottle. Don't think it's very old. It's got a screw thread on the top. But it's quite interesting. And I didn't smash it with a spade either, which was extremely lucky. This is reading 85 to 87, but it's a very faint signal. So I think it's something either very small or very deep. Or it's maybe it's just trash. Something very small. And I've no idea what that is. It looks almost like the flint that you'd use in a flint lock pistol. But it isn't made of flint, it's made of metal. So I've no idea what that is. Well, I wasn't counting, but I think there might have been either six or seven coins out of those markers that I put out. So six or seven out of ten, it's not bad. I did, of course, dig lots of other targets, which included ring pulls, deep iron, coke. Oh, I didn't dig any foil, but there was, there was all manner of rubbish in here. So whilst you've only seen me dig ten holes there, I've actually dug probably as nearer 40 holes just to get those 10 good markers out. I'm going to go on to another area now with a little bit less trash. Hopefully I'll be able to get both detectors going and we'll see what we can find there. Right next to the road here we've got a suspiciously loud 89 to 90 signal. Uh, I did actually find a half crown here about two years ago. So I don't know how I've missed this signal because it's only five feet away from where I found the half crown. If it was another one I'd be over the moon but with it being this close to the road you're always thinking tin can. So I'm going to give it a dig and find out. It's actually reading 87 now that I've got the soil off. Getting there. I can hear it beeping. Ah. Huge lump of lead way down. Just open it up to check there's no Roman gold inside it. Nah, no coin. And there's no curse written in there either. That's one for the scrap bucket. Now I've got to say, the last time I was up here, there was a few holes, quite a few holes in the long grass, where somebody had been digging metal detecting and it left them looking in an awful state. On this area here that I've just done and up the side of the road they've also been digging there but they filled them in nicely. They're actually pretty much just like mine. You can't really tell you that there's been somebody there unless you know what they've been doing. So that's spot on. The long ones in the long grass not too good. The ones where it really matters are good. Well I'm back doing what I love, two detectors at once, in an area with a little bit less trash. I've already dug 10 holes, I've got more than 10 pence, a pound coin, 
and get in there. Oh, that's George V. It's been well packed in there, it's been pretty good condition. Uh, 1930, 1930 penny from George VI. Ah, yep, an old penny in pretty good condition for 1930. So I'm going to continue only going with 10 pegs. And what I'm going to do is what I did in that really contaminated place. I'm only going to mark out the ones that are reading 75 and above on the Deus or are reading pretty much in the top quarter of the screen on the E-Track. I'm just going to dig everything else as I go, but I want these 10 pegs, hopefully, to be good coins. Couple of nice targets, both reading uh, roughly early to mid 80s on the Deus. Can't remember which machine picked them up. It's been reasonably 50 50. The best signals, though, have been coming from the E track. Really loud, booming signals. I think three of these 10 uh, were really tricky on the Deus. I'm not sure why that is, but I'll probably find out as I dig. May turn out to be rubbish. Modern penny. I think this is one of the ones that was tricky with a Deus. It doesn't like this signal at all. Well, the Deus didn't really like that at all. The e track gave a good reading on that one. And it looks like we've got a coin ball. Probably some modern half pence. Nah. Tiny little nut. Now the E-Track picked that one up better, which I was surprised at. Um, because I always tell people that I tend to get a lot more smaller targets with the Deus. Don't know why it didn't like that. Now that one there, that I think is just off camera, is reading 840. That one's very promising. Unless it's another bottle top. I found about 20 bottle tops already. Now this idea of using two detectors and markers is going to evolve again. What I'm going to do is have a pocket, 10 white markers, 10 red or orange markers. The white ones I'm going to use to mark out the targets that read under 70 on the Deus. And the red or orange ones I'm going to use to mark out the ones that read above 70 on the Deus. So when I look out, hopefully I can distinguish between good targets and iffy targets. Generally the best stuff I've found hits above 70 on the Deus. So that'll be really interesting. What I'm doing at the moment is I'm standing up the ones that are reading well above 70 and I'm lying down the ones that read below 70. So that's what gave me the idea. I'll dig all the ones that are lying down now, um, I'll go around with however many pegs I have spare, hopefully get them all standing up with good targets and then I'll dig them all, but I'll do live digs again. Well that's the last of the pegs out, took me about half an hour to get rid of the last two which shows that there's not many good targets left in this area. But now I'm going to dig them and I'm going to do a live dig for every one. Most of them are reading 80 odd, there's some 70s, there's some tricky ones as well. I'm not sure which is which, I'm just going to hit them as I come to them. Ooh, it's about time I was going home, so these 10 digs are going to be the last ones I'm doing. So I'm hoping for some silver. Don't know whether it'll come. I've got 10 chances, and given what I've dug so far, it's not looking good, but you never know. 
Well, there's a piece of aluminium tent peg off to a flyer. <laughs> Yet another modern penny. Humongous lump of lead pipe. Ooh. Ah, very good. 1927 penny from George the Sixth. That's the first good find, and we're only four holes in. Queen Elizabeth II Threpney bit from 1954. This is the one that the deers didn't really want to know about. But the E-Track loved this one, I remember, because it was miles out away from the other ones. And this is a possible coin ball as well. Very small coin, if it is a coin. Modern half pence. The E-Track absolutely loves them for some reason. I've had them down to about 11 inches, believe it or not, and that's a tiny little piece of copper. Tiny. I've even had them on angle, on end, way down in the ground. And it just gives a banging signal every single time. <sighs> the Deus knows better. It doesn't want these things. The e track wants everything. Five, six, right. We're down to the last four now. And I think I might have already dug that one that was reading 840. That was the one I was hanging all my hopes on. I can't even remember what it was. I don't know what that was, but I'm sure I've dug that one already because it was, was over there. I've got two here, one behind a the clump there, and one just behind me there. So there's four in a little cluster here. I'm hoping at least one of these is a good find. Bottle top. That's reading 8788. And it's a really loud signal as well. But I can't seem to find it. Oh dear me. Rookie mistake. It's right on the top. And it's another modern penny. Oh, there's an unusual one. Oh. It's a French 20 francs. It's a strange colour that, it's like a brownie colour and I always thought these were made of like an aluminium sort of material. 1951. It's an unusual find. Okay, it's all down to this last target. I'm going to give it a quick scan over just to see what it was like. Because I know there was one in the long grass that wasn't a very good signal. Yeah, that's a solid enough signal. Reading 85 to 86. I think it might be another modern penny, but hopefully not. Oh man, it's not even a spendable modern penny. Another bottle top. And that concludes the hunt. Oh God, I've got to go now. I'm about five minutes past when I should have left. So I'm going to blast home. I'll empty the rubbish out and I'll empty the finds out. So you can see the rubbish and the good. Well, that's the trash. Not too bad from a really trashy site. 
pretty much exactly what you'd expect to find on a trashy site. Here's a roundup of the coin finds, which, considering the amount of trash I dug, that's pretty good. Two shillings from 1966, a couple of threepenny bits, uh, four old pennies, uh, five hippenies. Pre this is all pre-decimal stuff. Little bottle, 50 pence, two 20 pence, three half pence, oh, six or seven pennies, two ten pences, and five pound coins. And there was also that foreign coin, which is 20 francs. And I also found that as well, which I think is some sort of St. Christopher medal. It's just made of plastic though. Actually, it can't be plastic because it gave a signal. It feels extremely light. Must be some alloy of some sort. That's not bad. I'm pleased with that. Well, thanks very much for watching. Nice little hunt reasonable amount of finds and I just enjoyed being out there sifting through all the trash removing all the metallic horrible objects from the ground for future generations to enjoy thanks for watching Yes, a modern penny, not a modern penny. <laughs> now that's what I call a hard clustered coin ball, uh, if it is indeed a coin ball. It's a very erratic signal. No, I don't think it is a coin ball. <laughs> no. Well, that's the last. Oh, bloody missiles. Get in there. Ooh. Get in there. Oh. Mm.